Historically, if you wanted to apply transitions to the dimensions of a corridor model, it required the use of a horizontal or vertical target. That said, not every subassembly supports targeting, and the ones that do may not apply to the dimensions you'd like to transition. This usually meant creating your own custom subassemblies from scratch. Fortunately, using Civil 3D 2023.2, we can apply transitions to virtually any dimension of any subassembly without the need for targets or custom parts. Let's take a look. On my screen, I have a portion of a roadway design. Let's take a quick tour. In this example, my primary road alignment is called First Street, and my secondary road alignment is called Connector Street. Note that these alignments already have corresponding finished grade profiles. Up here, we can see the assemblies used for First Street, and down below, we'll find the assemblies used for Connector Street. All of these items were brought together to build a single corridor model. This model also includes a top surface. Now, let's say I'd like to widen First Street to the east of the intersection. Typically, we would do this by generating line work representing a target that this lane edge would follow. Just for a second, let's go back to the First Street assembly and take a closer look at the lane used in this case. If I hover, we can see that it's the basic lane subassembly. And if you've ever used the basic lane, you'll know that it doesn't support targeting. We'll confirm this by selecting the assembly, and then I'll click to display the tool palette, and here on the Basic tab, I'll right-click Basic Lane and choose Help to bring up the documentation. If I scroll down, we can see Target Parameters None. Just above this, though, we can see that this part has three adjustable dimensions, Width, Depth, and Slope. Using Civil 3D 2023.2, we can apply transitions to any of these dimensions, even if they don't support targeting. Note that in this example, I'm using the basic lane subassembly part. That said, the transitioning workflow I'm about to show you applies to virtually any dimension of any subassembly part. Okay, let's close up some of these dialog boxes. Pay note that my current lane width is 12 feet, and then we'll pan back over to the corridor. Let's say I'd like to start my widening at station 5 plus 0, 0, and I'd like to taper out to station 6 plus 0, 0, where the roadway will be twice as wide, or 24 feet. I'll then carry that 24-foot width to station 8 plus 0, 0, and then I'll taper back to the original 12-foot width at station 9 plus 0, 0. To make things a little easier to see, I'm going to select the corridor and change the code set style to one that displays the assembly insertions, and I'll press Escape when finished. To create the corridor transition, I'll select the corridor model, and in the contextual ribbon, I'll select Edit Corridor Transition. And in this case, I have more than one baseline, so I'll click to select the one representing First Street. This opens the Corridor Transition tab in the Civil 3D panorama. I will then choose the subassembly I'd like to transition. Notice as I move my cursor, we can see the names and the highlighting on screen. I'll click the basic lane here on the left side. I can then select the dimension I'd like to transition. I'll choose Width. Next, I'll select the Start Station. For this example, I'll type 500 and press Enter. Now it wants to know what I want the width dimension to be at this station. If we look down below, we can see that the default value is 12 feet. Since I'm starting my transition here, I'm going to keep that dimension, so I'll type 12 and press Enter. Now it wants to know the station I'm transitioning to. I'll type 600 and press Enter. And I'll set the road width to 24 feet and press Enter. Finally, I can choose the transition type. This controls how the 12 to 24 foot measurement is calculated between the stations. For now, I'm going to select a linear or straight line transition. These other options will apply different degrees of curvature to the transitions. Note that I'm still in the command. This is because we can chain multiple transitions together into a transition set. Let's keep going. I'm going to say at station 800, enter. I'm going to keep that 24 foot width Enter with a linear transition. And then at station 900, I'll transition back to the original width of 12, and we'll make that linear as well. When I'm finished, I'll press Enter to complete the process. First things first, notice we don't see the changes to the corridor right away. To update the corridor, I'll click the Apply button. I will then do a quick regen to update the top surface. So, this transition was applied to a width dimension without the need for a target. Once again, I'm using the basic lane subassembly in this example. You can apply this feature to virtually any dimension of any subassembly part. 
Try using it to define curb lowerings or transitional daylighting. With a little practice, this feature can make it easier to model complex shapes using the out-of-the-box Civil 3D subassembly parts. Now that we've completed the transition, let's take a closer look at the dialog box. If I select here at the top, we can see the extent of the overall transition set. Note that the transition sets can be named if desired. Within this set, I can see the name of the subassembly part and the parameter or dimension that's transitioning. To the right, I can see the start and stop stations for each part of the transition set, as well as the assigned dimensions and transition type. Note that all of these items can be modified as needed. Clicking on each row will display a screen graphic showing the location of the transition in the overall design. Using the buttons at the top left, we can create additional transition sets or add transitions to existing sets. Clicking the red X, we have the ability to delete selected transitions. Note that many of these options can also be found by right-clicking on the rows. Transitions can also be exported to a CSV file, allowing you to make bulk changes to the values using an application such as Microsoft Excel, and then re-imported to update your corridor model. One last thing, if you're working with a corridor having multiple baselines, notice that the transition sets are organized by baseline. When you finish, you can simply click the X to close the panorama. Now that we understand how the corridor transition tool works, let's try using it in a more practical example. Just for a second, I'm going to load a pre-saved view to make this a little easier to see on screen. Here in the intersection area, the connector street has a daylight slope of 1 to 1. First street, however, has a 4 to 1 daylight slope. So I need to transition the daylight along this return from 1 to 1 to 4 to 1. Once again, I'll select the corridor and choose Edit Corridor Transition. I will then click to select the baseline for the return. I'll click to select my daylight subassembly, and then I'll choose the fill slope as the item I'd like to transition. My start station will be the beginning of the curve. I'll grab that using an end point. In the dialog box, we can see the current one-to-one -one value. I'll keep that slope by typing one, and I'll press enter. The end of the transition will be the end of this curve. Once again, I'll use an object snap. At this station, I'd like to be at four to one, so I'll type four and press enter. For now, we'll go with a linear transition and I'll press enter to complete the command. I will then click apply to calculate the transition and update the corridor. I will also do a quick regen to update the surface. Now, the linear transition looks okay. That said, let's try some of the other options. I'm gonna change this to cubic in and I'll click apply. That looks better. Let's try one more. I'll choose parabolic in and I'll click apply. That's even better. Once again, I'll do a regen to update things and I'll close the panorama. For more information about the transition options, open the help menu and choose what's new. In the search bar, type about corridor transitions. And from there, you can click the hyperlink to view an example of each of the transition methods as well as how each is calculated. As you can see, using the new Edit Corridor Transition feature makes it easy to apply and edit transitions on virtually any subassembly. Using the transition feature can help you reduce the need for custom subassemblies by unlocking even more value from Civil 3D's out-of-the-box content.